Hello once again, everybody. This is Adam Burke, the host of the Betters Box at BangTheBook.com. I also write my daily picks and tips piece over there, and I've had some requests recently for some screencast videos, some tutorials, if you will, on how to use fan graphs and also baseball savant. So for this particular screencast here, we're going to take a look at fan graphs, my favorite website out there for baseball statistics. I think a lot of my data, a lot of my information from this website, and of course, you've got uh, the great content that's written by all of their writers over there, like Jeff Sullivan, Jeff Zimmerman, Kylie McDaniel, Eric Longenhagen, Craig Edwards. Lots of guys doing fantastic work, guys and girls, doing fantastic work over at Fangraphs. Some very good analysis-based pieces there, Rotographs. A little bit more tuned toward the fantasy side of things, but a lot of betting application, a lot of crossover between fantasy baseball and betting on baseball. So good content over there as well. But my favorite thing to use Fangraphs for is the player pages and the team pages. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that here in this video. We'll go ahead and start actually with a look at the glossary section. If you go over to the glossary, click on library, you'll get taken to this page where in these drop down menus up here, these headers, whatever you want to call them, a lot of great articles, a lot of great explanations on the sabermetric terms that I use in my handicapping. A lot of these concepts may be very unique to some of the listeners out there. And of course, you know, if you've listened to me for a long time, read my writing for a long time, then you are very familiar with these concepts. Maybe you're somebody new to the show, or maybe you just found us at random searching for something to help you use fan graphs or help you handicap baseball. A lot of these things are what I use in my handicapping because I think these are the best statistics that are out there for not only breaking down the matchups, but also using it from a regression analysis standpoint which is the primary hallmark of my handicapping. So here in this glossary section, you go to the library page, you can get some good explanations on WOBA, weighted runs created, plus this is Fangraphs' base, runnings, base running metric, BABIP, home run to fly ball percentage, pull percentage, uh, contact quality, ground balls, line drives, fly balls, plate discipline, etc. Those are all f offensive statistics for the hitters. Then you've got defense for the position players, then also, of course, pitching. You know, I talk about a lot of sabermetric concepts when it comes to pitchers, particularly when we're breaking down the starting pitchers that will be going in any given game. A write-up on FIP, a write-up on XFIP, Sierra, strikeout and walk rates, batted ball distribution of ground balls, line drives, and fly balls, BABIP, home run to fly ball percentage, left on base percentage. A lot of the same things that I use in my handicapping all written about here, all very good explanations, easy to understand, and furthermore, gives you a good scale upon which you want to be grading these different statistics. You know, what is league average, what is considered good, what is considered bad, etc. So like this glossary section here at Fangraphs, including if you want to dig into some more next level stuff like run expectancy, win expectancy, win probability, leverage index, and then some of the other principles, regression to the mean, obviously we talk about that a lot, sample size, we talk about that a lot, park factors, very important, Pythagorean win-loss, lots of great information for you here, so I certainly recommend that if you're a little bit less familiar about with the terms that I use on the show and then also in my article, I think you definitely want to use this as a very good starting point for you. Ultimately, for me, what I use fan graphs for is getting all of the information about the pitchers, about the hitters, about the teams. Usually I just go ahead and type right into the search box here, or sometimes you'll of course find a guy like Carlos Martinez and Kyle Hendricks, who both started in the Thursday night game between the Cardinals and Cubs. You can find them right there in that search article, a lot of other people searching for them, or you just type in the name, sometimes you'll have multiple results for the same player's name. Uh, you know, obviously you just pick the one that's still playing in 2018, or you know, if you know when that player started, you'll be able to go ahead and key in on him. But you can also go to this scores tab, then go to probable pitchers. What you're going to see on this page is a list of the pitchers that are starting that particular day. Recording this here on Thursday, July 19th. So you've got Carlos Martinez and Kyle Hendricks. Jed Jerko not starting in that game for the Cardinals. But you go ahead, open this player profile page, and I certainly always recommend opening a new tab for that. It's one of my uh, organizational things, maybe a quirk if you want to call it that, but opening a new tab, always a very good idea there with that. So we go ahead and scroll down a little bit here, and obviously you can see the live results for Carlos Martinez, who did struggle in that Thursday night start, to say the least. 
But you've got his season-to-date numbers here, not including the start that's currently going on, uh, but his numbers coming into this July 19th start. And you see some pretty well-known, recognizable metrics here. You've got the 6-5 and five record in 16 starts over 90 and two-thirds innings, 308 ERA. If you scroll down a little bit under this standard tab, you'll see complete games, shutouts, innings pitched, hits, runs, etc. Those traditional metrics that you know some people still handicap with. I prefer the advanced metrics because I think that there's a lot more predictive quality to them. But you know whatever you decide to use, that's completely up to you and your prerogative. One thing that you can do here, you see these italicized stat lines. These are the minor league numbers for Carlos Martinez. So if this is just too many numbers for you, if you're a little bit put off or thrown off, something like that, click this minor leagues tab, they go away. So we look at Carlos Martinez here, and we're seeing a 308 ERA, a 372 FIP, and a 460 X FIP. Now, if you've listened to the show a lot or you've read my articles a lot, you know that looking at ERA to FIP or ERA to X FIP discrepancies can be a good way, a good signaling tool for positive or for the possibility of regression. In this case with Carlos Martinez, 308 ERA, 372 FIP, 460 X FIP. We would certainly expect his numbers to gradually rise a little bit. Now, of course, XFIP, expected fielder independent pitching, assumes a league average home run per fly ball percentage. This season, we've got Carlos Martinez down at 4.9. League average in the 12.5 to 13 range usually, so he's obviously well below the league average. That's why his XFIP of 460 is so much higher than his 372 FIP and his 308 ERA. But you can see here the strikeout rate the walk rate, the home run rate, BABIP and left on base percentage, two of those very important statistics that never reach a stabilization point. So when we're looking for positive or negative regression, we do like to key in on those two metrics. Ground ball percentage is here as well. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see strikeout percentage and walk percentage. And again, for Carlos Martinez this year, we're seeing a pretty big drop in strikeout percentage, a pretty big increase in walk rate. Those are things that obviously you want to take notice of, want to factor into your handicap, want to keep in the back of your mind. Batted ball data, line drive percentage, ground ball percentage, fly ball percentage, infield fly ball percentage, which is basically pop-up rate. There's home run to fly ball percentage again. Contact quality metrics. Uh, Then you scroll down a little bit more. Pitch usage, average velocities. And as you can see here, Carlos Martinez with that decrease in fastball velocity this season, has been taking some off, has been adding some back, stuff like that. He's talked about that, but, you know, it is something that maybe has hurt him a little bit uh, from a command standpoint, maybe has hurt him a little bit with that strikeout percentage decrease, stuff like that. We keep scrolling down here. We see some pitch value stuff. We also see the plate discipline metrics. O swing percentage, chase rate, Z swing percentage, percentage of pitches swung at in the strike zone. Swing percentage, pretty obvious. Contact made on pitches outside the strike zone. Contact made on pitches inside the strike zone. Here we see first pitch strike percentage, swinging strike percentage. You can factor all of these different things into your handicap. For example, if you're facing a team that's a very free swinging lineup and you see Carlos Martinez with that 31% chase rate, he's probably going to get a lot of swings and misses outside the zone in that particular start. So as we scroll back up here, What is one of the biggest problems for Carlos Martinez this year? This number right here, 11.7% walk percentage. So if he faces a lineup that chases a lot of pitches, swings a lot, expands the strike zone a lot, that's going to neutralize that high walk percentage. As we look at tonight's start, for example, gave up six runs on seven hits over five innings to the Cubs. The Cubs have one of the highest walk rates in Major League Baseball. Don't believe me? Let's go ahead and take a look. As we go up here to the Teams tab, then we go to 2018, then we can kind of you know start to see what the offensive profiles look like for these particular teams. We see the Cubs here as they lead in position player F war, Fangraphs wins above replacement player calculation. We search by the walk percentage category, and we see here the Cubs are fifth in Major League Baseball. What do we know about Carlos Martinez? He walks a lot of guys. Well, he only walked one in this start, as we saw on that previous page. However, the Cubs don't chase a whole lot of pitches outside the zone. They draw a lot of walks, so we know that they don't chase a lot of pitches outside the zone. What does that mean for us? Well, it means that Carlos Martinez is probably going to struggle in a matchup like that 
And that's exactly how it happened in that particular start. So we're on the team page here. And in this splits menu, lots of great information in here. You can see how the teams have performed over the last 30 days. You can see their splits by month. You can see their splits against lefties, their splits against righties, some more platoon advantage stuff with righties against lefties, lefties against righties. Uh, you can see home and away splits. You can see splits with the bases empty and men in scoring position. So let's go ahead and take a look here for a second out of curiosity at the splits against right-handed pitchers. We'll go to the advanced tab because these are all the basic traditional counting metrics, things that don't really have a whole lot of value for us based on the way that I handicap baseball. So we go to the advanced side of things. Here's the Cubs. Second in WOBA weighted on base average against right-handed pitching this season at 335. Same 9.7% walk rate. So the Cubs against righties do a very good job. They do a very good job against pitchers that have high walk rates. Carlos Martinez, high walk rate. So this one just happened to work out for those that did play the Cubs, maybe play the Cubs team total over, something like that. Now the Cardinals here, in this matchup for them tonight against right-hander Kyle Hendricks, they rank 18th in WOBA at 312, 95 weighted runs created plus, which means that they're 5% below league average in that split. Maybe not an optimal matchup for them. Maybe a matchup where they do kind of struggle a little bit. So these are things that you can use these platoon split pages to try and figure out. I know we're doing a very quick crash course here on Fangraphs, so bear with me. Got about 15 minutes for this screencast here. So then we'll take a look actually at the pitching leaders. Didn't mean to click the batting leaders. We'll go to the pitching leaders here. One of the things that we talked about on Thursday's edition of the betters box is we we're looking for pitchers in line for regression in the second half. We talked about left on base percentage. So you sort by the column header here for left on base percentage. Again, leaders, pitching leaders, 2018. It's only, only going to show you qualified starting pitchers. So guys with a pretty significant sample size. Blake Snell, 86.3%, highest in Major League Baseball, 227 ERA, certainly a byproduct of this, and a byproduct of this with a 243 batting average against on balls in play. High left on base percentage because he's a master of inducing weak contact. We can see that from the BABIP, and we'll see that as well in the Baseball Savant data with the next screencast video that I do, but also a high strikeout rate. So he's able to strand those base runners with two outs. So you look at a guy like him, yes, the ERA is low. Yes, there's probably some room for some type of regression, but a 341 FIP, 356 XFIP, both very well above league average. So maybe Blake Snell, a guy where regression is a little bit more gradual, maybe uh, to a lesser degree than somebody like John Lester. John Lester talked about a lot in Thursday's edition of the Betters Box. 83.6% left on base percentage. Still the low BABIP at 253. Doesn't actually rate as well as Blake Snell in the contact management metrics, as we'll show you in the next video. But John Lester has a very low strikeout rate here. 7.09K per nine. You go to the advanced tab, you can see his strikeout percentage, if you prefer to do it that way. But then you look over here and see John Lester with a 258 ERA, 434 FIP, 459 XFIP, that's a big discrepancy. We would look at somebody like John Lester to really run into some negative regression as we go forward. Again, you can see here in this left on base percentage sort list, you've got a lot of guys who miss a lot of bats. Sometimes you don't, like a Kyle Freeland, like a John Lester. These are guys that you'd be a little bit more concerned about, a Chase Anderson, a Mike Fires, something like that. Now, when it comes to somebody like John Lester, we go back over here to the team batting stats page we go into the split against lefties and we'll see that John Lester may be a guy that you want to look to fade against certain teams but not others the Cincinnati Reds fifth in Woba at 333 Arizona Diamondbacks eighth in Woba at 325 down the list you've got the Brewers 25th with a 297 Woba the Marlins and the Mets the two worst teams against lefties so John Lester in line for some regression, as we can see from that ERA, FIP, and XFIP discrepancy. But then we look at the platoon splits page, how these offenses fare against lefties, and we can see that not all matchups are created equal. So Fangraphs has a ton of great information. I love using it. I know this was a quick crash course for you, but uh, you know, obviously going to help you a lot with your baseball handicapping.